you so much for the introduction. Uh, so in this talk, I, I will present our work uh, that uses safety properties to generate vulnerability patches. So first, I will discuss some uh, background information on software vulnerabilities and automatic program repair. Then I will describe safety property and how we use safety properties to generate vulnerability patches, which involves synthesizing patch predicate and optimizing patch location. Lastly, I'll present our evaluation results and conclude. Software vulnerabilities continue to be a rampant problem. Last year, over 16,000 vulnerabilities were reported. Among them, 25% are well-known vulnerabilities, including buffer overflows, bad type cost, and integer overflows. So far this year, 3,000 vulnerabilities have already been reported. One of software vulnerability is discovered. The software vendor will need to develop a patch and release the patch for the vulnerability, after which users can apply the patch to fix the vulnerability. Because releasing the patch takes time. There usually exists a window of time between the discovery of a vulnerability and the release of a patch, which is called a pre-patch window. During the pre-patch window, attackers can exploit this known vulnerability because the patch is yet available. One study published in 2016 finds that the average pre-patch window is as long as 52 days. In order to reduce the pre-patch window, many automatic program repair techniques or APR techniques have been proposed. Some of them leverages fixed patterns to mimic developers' patches. Some uses genetic programming to generate the patches. Some generate the patches by borrowing code from correct programs. Others use symbolic execution and constraint solver to generate the patches. However, state-of-art API techniques have two major limitations when they are used to generate vulnerability patches. First, the correctness of the generated patches is heavily dependent on the completeness of the test suite they use because they generate a large number of candidate patches and then rely on the test suites to determine whether a candidate patch is correct or not. If the test suite is incomplete, an incorrect patch can pass the test suite and mistakenly be considered correct. A study published in 2015 confirms that most of those previously considered correctly generated patches by state-of-art API techniques are indeed incorrect due to this limitation. So, uh, so, so now we show one um, patch that is incorrectly generated by state-of-art API techniques. This patch rem uh, removes a check to integer overflow in the code of libtib in an attempt to fix an integer overflow. Due to the incompleteness of the test suite, 
this incorrect patch would simply not trigger the test input that would review the integer overflow. And thus, will be incorrectly considered correct. Second, the, um, um, uh, this um, API techniques are not designed to address um, complex vulnerabilities involving interprocedural code because they focus on generating candidate patches for a single function. For simple code, like this uh, uh, example, where the, the allocation of the buffer and the exercise of the buffer occur in the same function, they may be able to generate a patch uh, that would check whether the range of uh, exercise is within the bounds of the buffer. However, they cannot generate the correct patches when the allocation of the buffer and the exercise of the buffer occur in different functions. The example is the result of breaking down the previous example code into three separate functions. Function G allocates the buffer. Function H access the buffer. And function F calls G and H to allocate and access the buffer. This is a common uh, pattern existing in complex and large applications. The challenge is that function H has no information on the size of the buffer. Function F does not have information on the range of X size. Well, function F is not directly involved in the vulnerability. The fundamental cause of these limitations is that they do not take into account the semantics of vulnerabilities. So, to, uh, so our uh, solution um, aims to address these limitations by um, capture the semantics of vulnerabilities with safety properties, and then use these safety properties to generate vulnerability patches. We propose an approach called SYNCs that uses human-defined safety properties to generate vulnerability patches. A, a safety property is designed specifically for one type of vulnerabilities. For example, given a safety property for buffer overflows, SYNCs can generate the patches for buffer overflows in many different target programs. SYNCs generates um, source code patches that can be easily adopted by developers. A SYNCs patch is in the form of an if statement that would divert program execution to error handling code when the safety property is violated. And here, we call this checked condition as a patch predicate. A safety property defines an invariant to prevent a type of vulnerabilities. For example, by the definition of buffer overflow, we can define a safety property for uh, buffer overflows that would check between the range of uh, exercise with the bounds of the target buffer. As long as the range of X size is within the bounds of a target buffer, no vulnerability can occur. By doing this, the correctness of the generated patches is enforced by the correctness of the safety properties used to generate 
these vulnerability patches. To generate a patch, SYNCS maps a safety property to a patch predicate consisting of program expressions available in the code of a target program. For one given safety property, the code of a target program and an input to trigger the vulnerability, SYNCS executes the target code, observes where the safety property is violated, and maps the safety property to a patch predicate. For example, the, this code allocates the buffer via a call to malloc with the size specified by S and stores the starting address of the buffer to point above. So things will map buffer start and buffer size in the safety property to buff and S respectively for this target program. Similarly, things will map exercise range and exercise start to L and P respectively because the target program access the buffer via a call to memo copy with the starting address specified by point P and the links specified by L. Eventually, things will map the safety property into a patch predicate for this target program as shown here. To address those vulnerabilities involving interprocedural code, SYNCS translates um, program expressions across different program scopes if needed. For this same example code that we uh, shown before, SYNCS will find that uh, the buffer size can be mapped to P times Q in the scope of function G. And the exercise range can be mapped to lean in the scope of H. Because function F is the common color of G and H, SYNCS tries to translate the buffer size and exercise range to the scope of F. By examining the arguments used by F to call G and H, SYNCS will translate uh, P times Q from the scope of G to R times C in the scope of F, and it translates lean from the scope of H to N in the scope of F. And uh, by, by doing so, things can synthesize a patch predicate and assess a patch in the scope of F. In the case when the patch is to be inserted into the body of a loop, SYNCS tries to promote the patch outside the loop body to reduce runtime overhead. This requires to find out the range of um, exercise performed by the body of a loop. SYNCS address that with two techniques. For well-formed loops, SYNCS uses access range analysis to statically compute a symbolic access range for, the, for these loops. And in this example, SYNCS will find that the access range for this nested loop is n times m. And then it will use n times m in the generated patch. For other loops, SYNCS uh, would use loop cloning that will clone the code of the function that contains the loop, makes the cloned code free of side effect, and then let the patch cause the cloned code to dynamically compute the access range. As shown in this example, the code on the right, uh, we show the clone code on the top. And uh, at the bottom, 
we showed the patch generated by things. We'll call this cloned code at the runtime to compute the access range outside the body of the loop. We built a prototype of things that targets three common types of vulnerabilities. Our prototype is built on top of um, LLVM and works with target programs written in C and C++. We evaluate the things on 42 real-world vulnerabilities in 11 widely deployed applications and libraries, which in total have over 3 million lines of source code. Sync successfully generates patches for 76% of these vulnerabilities. To verify the correctness of the generated patches, we manually compile the generated patches with official patches. So um, here we show one sample patch generated by Sync. So the figure on the left. Um, shows the patch generated by things, where the figure on the right shows the patch uh, that's created by human developers. And we can see the two patches are almost identical. Things does not generate the patches in some cases, mainly due to two causes. First, things may not be able to map a safety property to a patch predicate due to the complexity of the code of a target program. Second, things may not be able to find a program scope in which all the program expressions involved in a patch predicate are available. To conclude, we propose an approach called Sync that uses human-defined program-independent safety properties to generate vulnerability patches. The correctness of the generated patches is enforced by the correctness of these safety properties. Our evaluation shows that Sync can generate uh, vulnerability patches for real-world vulnerabilities. Thank you, and I'm open to questions. Do we have any questions from the audience? We actually have a lot of time left. Well, then, then let me start uh, the, the, with one simple question. Mm -hmm. So one thing that I'm not quite uh, sure if I understand is that uh, what exactly is the input to your system? Um, I understand it's, the some, it's some form of expression of a safety property. Yes, that's right. Well, let's say for a, for a vulnerability, for a reported vulnerability, what exactly is, uh, is the input to your system? Oh, so we uh, require uh, the code of the um, target program, and uh, we also require one input to trigger the vulnerability, along with the safety uh, property. So that's the basically three types of inputs to my system. Okay, then a follow-up question to that is uh, how easy or, or how difficult to, to construct or define this property given mm -hmm. a new bug? Um, um, yes, that's a, yeah. Per, um, so regarding that, uh, from our um, uh, experiment, uh, and for these uh, three types of vulnerabilities that things can currently fix, uh, they are very simple to define the safety properties uh, because we just provide some primitives for uh, security experts to write uh, in these expressions that is an invariant to prevent uh, one type of vulnerabilities. I assume that uh, the efforts required for defining these properties would be much less than the effort required for really writing a patch to this vulnerability? Um, I'm not sure if, uh, yeah, we, we can compile this way, because uh, the fact is that uh, 
to use uh, things to generate the patches, we only need to define a safety property for one type of vulnerability once. So once a safety property is defined for one type of vulnerabilities, then we can just uh, use the same safety property to generate many vulnerability patches. Okay, thanks.